On 2nd of April 1951, James Joseph Baldine of Hubbard, Ohio submitted a design for a one-man tank. Like so many other one-man tank designs, Baldine's had all the advantages of protecting a single soldier behind armor, but also the same disadvantages of a lack of fightability, observation, and vehicle control. He had, however, carefully considered the control aspect of the one-man tank, devising a foot pedal control system which would allow the operator to manage the tank's steering and propulsion entirely with his feet, keeping his hands free to operate a weapon. Baldine was no doubt influenced by current events, as the design was submitted at the time of the Korean War, but showed what can only be described as naive thinking in military terms, especially in the post-World War II era. Nonetheless, the design was a thorough one, producing probably the best of all of the one-man tanks, and showing how many of the challenges for such a concept could be overcome. Baldine's tank did not separate the engine from the operator, but placed it directly behind him, with the control pedals for steering and braking at his feet. The engine is described only as a four-cylinder air-cooled aviation-type motor, behind which was a conventional fluid transmission, connected to the final drive for the tracks, and a power takeoff with a small propeller allowing for propulsion in water. Exhaust gases were vented directly out of the top, but with no provision for a fan in such a small machine, the operator would be quickly fatigued from the proximity of the hot engine, despite the presence of a bulkhead between them. Directly under the crotch region of the pad, under the operator, was the fuel tank for the engine. The tracks for Balding's tank are not specified, but he describes them only as an endless track with suspension of a shock-absorbing type. The only mention of armament from Baldine is of a single machine gun in the front. The artwork submitted for his patent application in 1951 seems to indicate a 50 caliber machine gun like the M2 Browning. Fitted with a simple ball mount in the nose of the tank, it would actually have a potentially wide arc of fire. Ammunition for it was fed from a magazine secured to the side of the nose wall. A secondary weapon in the form of a forward firing rocket launcher sticking out of the front was located to the left of the operator. Fed from a magazine at the rear, the purpose of the rocket launcher is unclear as to whether it was for smoke or anti-tank or other purposes. The exhaust gas from the rocket was directed down below the vehicle to prevent it from giving away the position of the tank. The operator was provided with a sight to try and aim it. No other armament or smoke launchers were provided for, although presumably any soldier inside would also have their personal weapon as well, such as a submachine gun or handgun. The tank itself was somewhat more complex than many other one-man tank concepts, and also a lot larger. While other designs lacked enough space for the operator to sit up, Baldine proposed a taller vehicle with a pronounced dome directly over the soldier. Provided with ventilation slots, this dome would provide air and comfort for the soldier, but was not used for observation. Instead, all observation was conducted through a single large bulletproof glass window located directly to the soldier's front over the main armament. Access to the tank was gained via a small sliding hatch located midway down the roof, meaning the soldier would be exposed to enemy fire if and or when the machine became stuck. A common flaw in the one-man tank concept is the issue of comfort for the soldier crewing the vehicle. The operator is already very busy having to command, steer, and fight from the tank, and obviously this is made harder if they are uncomfortable. Taking a prone position where the soldier is lying on his front can become very tiring after a while, particularly after traveling over rough country and having to lift their head up in order to see and fight, which produces additional strain. Baldine's additional idea to assist his one-man tank concept was the addition of a specially designed sponge rubber pad on which the soldier could lay. Specially shaped, this pad would hold the operator in a steady position, providing support for his arms and chin as well as a wedge-shaped block at the crotch. This crotch block would prevent the soldier from slipping down the mattress. Raised edges on the sides and base would stop him from sliding side to side as well. The one-man tank idea, something first proposed decades earlier and something which had never seen any successful mass production or use, was a dead idea by the 50s. It can be surmised that Baldine was motivated by seeing the war in Korea and wanted to do his part for his country, and to save the lives of soldiers or maybe just opportunism to try and make some money from an idea. Regardless of his motivations though, the design itself was not a terrible one by any means. As far as the concept goes, the design certainly had merit for the control of the machine and the layout, but the concept of a one-man tank was just fundamentally a bad one. A single soldier would be unable to adequately command, control, and fight from the vehicle, and the features of the vehicle inherent within the design, such as a low profile, giving low visibility, prevent such an idea being viable. As such, his one-man tank design might have been a very good one-man tank design, but the concept was simply a flawed one. As such, his design suffered from those flaws, and despite his best efforts, he could not overcome them, ending the one-man tank idea. 
Undeterred, Baldini would go on to submit more patents, including a portable incinerator for motor vehicles in 1963. While not met with success in his inventive endeavors, his political career as mayor of Hubbard, Ohio was far more successful. Serving six consecutive terms, he passed away while serving in office in 1974.